Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another true crime and makeup video. Today we're going to be covering the case of Nevada Tan. And we're going to a different country today. We're going to go to Japan. It's my first Japanese case. And I do get a lot of requests from you guys to do cases from your countries. And I would love to start doing cases from more different countries, not just the UK and the US. And this case got a lot of attention. I feel like a lot of cases get a lot of attention and it's always for the wrong reasons. It's because of the age of the person we're going to be talking about today. And she was just 11 years old. She's so young. And when someone is that young, there is always going to be a lot of attention surrounding the case. But unfortunately, as some of these cases do, uh, the case turned into somewhat of an internet sensation. There were memes created about Nevada, about this case. There was even people dressing up and impersonating the killer. And the hoodie that the girl was wearing at the time of the case was a Nevada hoodie. And the University of Nevada actually had to stop selling that hoodie because demand went through the roof because of this case. But before we get onto today's video, I just wanna give a huge thank you to our sponsor for today's video, and that is Karma. Yes, we have have our first sponsor and I just want to thank every single one of you watching right now because without all of you I would not be able to have opportunities like this and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I first heard about Karma from another YouTuber that I'm subscribed to and I've actually been using it for a while myself. So Karma is an app and a Chrome extension that makes sure you never miss a discount code when you are shopping online and I'll leave a link in the description box where you can download it for free. But my favorite thing about Karma is that it lets you organize all of the products that you have your eye on into one single online wish list. And if you're anything like me, there is always 101 things that I want to buy, but they're either always out of stock or they're a little bit too pricey. Well, with Karma, because you have all of those products saved in that one place, it will notify you when a product comes back in stock or when it goes on sale. I know, it's pretty great. I use Karma quite a lot, but I recently just used Karma and I saved quite a lot of money on an eyeshadow palette because we all know eyeshadow palettes can be pretty pricey. So you can install the Karma Chrome extension using the link in my description box. And then when you're shopping online and you see a product that you want, you can click the Karma button on the side of the page and add it to one of your lists. You can also organize your wish list into different categories, which I love because I love organizing things. I have a makeup wish list. I have a clothes one. I also have one for trainers. And Karma will notify you on your phone or by email when one of those products comes back in stock or when it goes on sale. And not only that, if you are using your computer to do some shopping, Karma will automatically scan the web for any discount codes and you can apply them at checkout. It is so, so simple to use. And you can also earn cash back via PayPal when you are shopping with selected retailers. So if you want to try Karma, don't forget there is a link in my description box where you can download it for free. Thank you Karma so much for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now let's jump into today's case. So Nevada Tan was born on the 21st of November, 1992, which means she was a Scorpio. And Nevada was only 11 years old when this horrific murder happened. And because of how young she was when this happened, her identity was kept from the public. And this is because of Japan's legal procedures that prohibit the identification of juvenile offenders. So initially, and for a lot of the sources that I use for this video, she is referred to as Girl A. But then the internet, of course the internet came along. The internet gave her the nickname of Nevada Tarn and she's referred to as Nevada Tarn in a lot of sources as well, or just Nevada. So in this video, I will be referring to girl A as Nevada Tarn or Nevada. I just found that it was easier to follow if we actually gave her a name instead of saying girl A all the time. This case takes place in Sasebo, Nagasaki in Japan. And because of where this case took place, sometimes this case is also referred to as the Sasebo slashing. So Sasebo is the city that Nevada went to school in and I don't know for sure, I couldn't find an actual proper source, but I assume this is where she lived and this is where she grew up. And on the surface, Nevada Tan's childhood seems pretty normal, pretty happy, both at school and at home. And she was always involved in a lot of activities. She was a very active child. She was really into art. She loved to draw. She was also really into sports. She actually played for her school basketball 
basketball team. So not only was Nevada very outgoing and very active, she was also literally a genius. And I'm, I'm not joking there, she was actually a genius. She had an IQ of 140. And doesn't that just sound weirdly familiar to a certain Paris Bennett? And it's just weird, isn't it? The similarities and the parallels with Paris and Nevada, both geniuses, and both commit murder at a very young age. So even though Nevada was technically classed as a genius, her school grades did begin to drop. And her mom thought that her grades were dropping because she was spending too much time playing basketball, which resulted in Nevada's mom telling her that she had to quit the basketball team. She was no longer allowed to play basketball uh, because she needed to get her grades up. So this is what Nevada did. She dropped out of the basketball team so she could concentrate on improving her school grades. And this kind of changed Nevada's life completely. She went from being a very active, a very outgoing child, always doing all of these different activities, to now being shut in her room. And this meant that she was spending a lot more time in her room on her own. However, Nevada really struggled to spend all of this time shut in her room, focusing on her schoolwork. And I can completely understand that. I have a very short attention span when it comes to work and I need breaks. And I just couldn't imagine at 11 years old, especially just being shut in my room, working for hours on my schoolwork. I couldn't imagine it. And Nevada really struggled with this. So because she was shut in her room, for hours at a time, she developed some new hobbies to pass the time. She started to watch a lot of anime, but she also started to become fascinated with horror movies and would literally spend hours watching horror movie after horror movie after horror movie. And I don't know how she did that because I can't watch horror movies now. My imagination goes into overdrive sometimes when I watch horror films, so I just don't watch them. But this is something that Nevada loved. She loved horror films and this is how she would pass the time. It was during this time where she was watching one horror film after another that she watched one that clearly spoke to her because she kind of became obsessed with it and it is the film Battle Royale. And a brief summary of the film because it actually does kind of play into the story. It's basically a group of school students I think they're all in the same school year. They're basically sent to a remote island. They're given weapons and they basically have to fight to the death. Like only one can survive. Basically like Hunger Games. And I've actually read that this film inspired Hunger Games. I don't know how true that is. But the main difference between Hunger Games and Battle Royale is that Battle Royale, they were all school students and they were all in the same school year. So there was more of a personal and emotional connection among the students, whereas Hunger Games, they don't know each other apart from the other one in their district. And because this film was so gory, Nevada kind of became obsessed with gore as well. And her obsession with gore actually went so far because she created her own website dedicated to her gore obsession. And on this website, she would share articles about horror and gore, and she would also share like animations horror animations and gore. And this is crazy because she's 11 years old. I mean, she may even be 10 when she actually set up this website. And this is in 2003, 2004 when this is going on. YouTube didn't even exist. Like this is before Facebook. I mean, I know she's a genius, but I'm really impressed that she was able to set up her own website because it definitely wasn't as easy as it is now. And then on her little blog website, she added a profile just to kind of like give, we all know what our profile is, to give basic information and interest and stuff. And I thought it was interesting. I'll put a little screenshot of it on the screen, but under the what interests you, her answer was, that's a secret. I just thought that was so weird. Like it's weird to actually think that an 11 year old wrote that. But yeah, other things that she was interested in, she put basketball, cause obviously she was very interested in basketball. Her favorite animal was a cat. And just that her favorite hobby, which we all know by now is watching movies. And this blog actually became quite successful. A lot of her school classmates knew about this blog and would comment on this blog. However, as with all social media, even though this wasn't really classed as social media, but it kind of is because you can leave comments. But what can often happen when you put yourself out there on the internet, people can be really, really mean. And this is what Nevada experienced. Some people didn't always leave the nicest comments. And it has been reported that Nevada would be bullied in these comments. They would become very problematic. They would become very toxic. I mean, kids, kids are mean. 
kids are very, very mean, especially at like 11 or 12. They are so mean. It's like they don't have that filter, but their brain has developed enough to be really, really mean. But yeah, they don't have that filter. So it all just comes out. And especially on the internet, moral of the story, kids are mean. And it was these kinds of comments that Nevada was experiencing on her blog that did lead to the tragic events of today's case. And one classmate in particular would comment on Nevada's blog quite often, and it was one of her very close friends, Satomi. Now, Satomi and Nevada were really, really close. They were in the same class. They played basketball together. They were on the same team. And they would often talk and message each other online as well. And then one day, they must have had some kind of falling out because Satomi didn't leave the nicest comment on Nevada's blog. She insulted her weight she did call her fat and she called her a goody goody and this hurt Nevada's feelings a lot she was just hurt she was confused it's like you're supposed to be my friend why are you being mean to me and she did want an apology from Satomi which to be honest I can't blame her but Satomi ignored Nevada she didn't give her an apology she refused to give her an apology and instead of apologizing and just making up she called her pretentious. And following this, Nevada did become outraged that her friend would treat her like this, that she would call her these names and then refuse to apologize. And it was very soon that Satomi became a sworn enemy of Nevada and she was just not gonna let this drop. This is when she started to become very, very angry. And it wasn't just Satomi that she would take her anger out on. It soon spilled out into the classroom and also at home. At times, she actually became quite aggressive to her classmates. She would sometimes kick and push the boys in her school, like into the walls, like and in the playground. And it was around this time that Nevada was actually allowed to play basketball again because she was obviously told she wasn't allowed to. She had to improve her grades. Well, her mom said, you can join the basketball team again and I don't know why like I don't know if her grades did improve or I don't know if her mom just thought that it would help with her her anger issues but regardless Nevada was allowed to join the basketball team again which she did but pretty much as soon as she started playing basketball again she quit on her own accord and she has said quote I don't like playing with my friends because she quit basketball and she didn't really do anything else she was continuing on spending so much time in her room being consumed by horror and gore and really immersing herself into her blog and inevitably probably getting negative comments she found another obsession and this time it was a tv show and this tv show was called Monday Mystery Theater and this was another pretty gruesome pretty pretty gory TV show that aired every Monday. And basically what I could find out about this TV show, it was fictional. Someone is basically just trying to solve this fictional murder that's happened, but it would be pretty gruesome. It's not like, I don't know, CSI or um, Criminal Minds or anything like that. Like it was more gruesome, more gore. And I don't know, cause I've never seen it, but from what I read, there was apparently a lot of depictions of people being killed with box cutters which does come back up. And it wasn't long until there was an incident at school where Nevada actually threatened a boy at her school with a box cutter. And she actually had a box cutter. She didn't just threaten him with the idea of a box cutter. She had actually gotten her hands on a box cutter. And I don't know where she got it from. I don't know if it was from school, from home. And this incident was just dismissed by the teachers. I don't know what her parents had to say about this. This is red flag number one. I mean, there was probably a couple more, but this is definitely Definitely red flag number one people we need to pay attention when children start threatening people and they actually have a knife in their hand again this is very similar to Paris Bennett isn't it and from what I could find out from my research no investigation was made into how she got the knife what she was doing why she was even threatening this boy like what did he do you know what did he do to be threatened with a knife but yeah nothing was done about this little Little, it's not little. Nothing was done about this box cutter incident and it was less than a week after this incident that Nevada got another 
quite mean comment from Satomi on her blog. Again, Satomi insulted Nevada on her weight. And unfortunately, it was only four days later that the terrible events of this case take place. So it is now the 1st of June, 2004, and Nevada and Satomi are just going to school like any normal day. And this day was actually the day of their annual school photo. Do you guys remember those days? Oh my God, I would dread those days. I hated them so much. You can see there's actually a picture of the whole class having their photo done and it was at lunchtime on this day that Nevada went to Satomi and told her, I think she told her that she needed to show her something um, in an empty classroom. So she led Satomi into an empty classroom. Satomi went along with her willingly because she thought that she had something to show her. And I've got to warn you, this next bit is not easy to hear. So Nevada sat Satomi in a chair and told her to cover her eyes, but Satomi didn't want to. So Nevada actually covered her eyes for her. She put her hand over her eyes. And then Nevada took out a box cutter and she slashed Satomi. Satomi's throat. Nevada also slashed Satomi's wrists and very tragically these wounds were fatal. Nevada then walked out of the classroom just leaving Satomi there lying in a pool of her own blood and Nevada just very eerily made her way through the corridors of the school covered in her friend's blood. And there are reports that when Nevada slashed Satomi's throat and wrists, that she just watched her friend bleed out. I wouldn't be surprised if it was true, but I couldn't confirm, but I did see reports of that happening. Now, Nevada and Satomi, it was the end of lunchtime, they were both due back in their classroom. Neither of them were to be found. And the teacher was like, where the hell are these two girls? They should be back by now. And it was at this moment that Nevada appeared in the doorway of the classroom. And the teacher and the rest of the class saw Nevada. She was just stood there covered in blood. And the teacher's immediate reaction, she rushed over to Nevada because she thought she'd hurt herself. She assumed that the blood that was all over Nevada was her own. I mean, that's pretty understandable. If you saw a child and they were covered in blood or just had blood on them, you would assume that they had hurt themselves and it was their own blood. You definitely would not assume that they had gotten a box cutter and had slit the throat and the wrists of one of their close friends. Gained very eerily, cause she's just stood there. She just says to the teacher, this is not my blood. And I'll put the photo on the screen, but when I was researching this case, this photo came up a lot. And a lot of people are reporting that this is Nevada Tarn herself after she committed the murder. And this photo was supposedly taken after the murder, like just after the murder. But you can clearly see that this is not Nevada Tarn. And you can clearly see that the girl in this picture is older. Plus she's wearing a skirt. Nevada Tarn was wearing trousers on this day. I don't know where she got this skirt from. It's just one of the weird things that surround this case because a lot of people actually dress up as Nevada Tarn for like Halloween and stuff. And this is one of them. So because Nevada hadn't actually said that the blood was Satomi's, she just said that it wasn't her blood. The teacher was still like, where Satomi? Like, where is she? So she did go and investigate to try and find where Satomi was. And she did find her in a nearby classroom and it was obvious straight away the tragedy that had occurred. The police were called immediately. And when the police arrived, they immediately arrest Nevada, even though arrest is probably not the right word because Nevada is only 11 years old. And obviously the age of criminal responsibility is different in all countries. If she was in the UK, the criminal age of responsibility is 10, so she would be arrested. However, in Japan, it was 14, so she's not really being arrested, she's just been taken to the police station. And when Nevada had been taken in for her crimes, it is reported that she just kept saying over and over again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Nevada did admit that she was the one that carried out the murder, but apart from this information, she didn't say anything else to the police. When she was asked about what motivated her to commit the murder, she didn't say anything. She was also refusing food and drinks that were being offered to her in the police station. And she spent the whole night in the police station and eventually she did accept some food. She accepted some bread and some juice. 
And after she'd finished eating and drinking, she did start to open up about what happened. Nevada initially told the police about the comments that Satomi had left on her blog, insulting her weight and calling her a goody goody. And she told the police when these comments obviously started and that the most recent ones were only four days prior to the day of the murder. And it was after those second comments just four days ago that she started to plan the murder. So the murder was premeditated and that always freaks me out when I find out that a murder committed by a child is premeditated because children just shouldn't be thinking like that. I understand that their brains aren't developed so you can almost kind of wrap your head around like a spur of the moment accident kind of situation. But when it's premeditated, that just freaks me out. She also told the police about the Monday mystery theater show that she would watch and that a lot of the murders on there would depict people being killed with box cutters. And this is how she got the inspiration to use the box cutter. And because she was seeing these other people being killed with box cutters, she thought, I can do that to Satomi. And I can't even imagine what it would be like as police officers that have to inform parents that their child has been murdered but the police officers had the heartbreaking job of telling Satomi's father exactly what happened and Satomi was 12 years old at the time of the murder she was so young and she was the youngest of three siblings she did have two older brothers and the family had already been through such tragedy because Satomi's mom had died about three years prior to this murder she had cancer so the family have already been through so much and now to lose a daughter as well and Satomi's dad described Satomi me as being like heir to him. She was everything to him and I can't even imagine the heartbreak that he went through. And something that he just couldn't wrap his head around was how could Nevada do this to one of her close friends? So a few months after the murder, the case was heard in a family court and normally everything would be done to avoid sending a child as young as Nevada to an institution. But because of how serious the crime was, I mean, it's about as serious as you can get, murder, the court decided that they had to send Nevada to an institution because there was just no way to avoid this. So she was sent to a reformatory institution for two years. And while she was at this institution, she was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. And because of this diagnosis, her sentence was increased by another two years. So she would spend a total number of four years in this institution. But as you can imagine from this case, a lot of theories have come out about what exactly happened. And of course, a lot of discussion and a lot of emphasis was placed on the fact that she liked horror films and TV. And in particular, a lot of emphasis was put on the Battle Royale movie and also the TV show Murder Mystery Theater because they were quite extreme. They weren't like your usual horror. And a lot of people have said that Nevada being exposed to this at such a young age was what caused her to murder. I've said this before, but I don't agree with that. I mean, there would have been a lot of children and there still is a lot of children that do like horror. They probably even watched the same things that Nevada did and they didn't commit murder. But a big theory that was thrown around a lot online when it came to this case, and I'd never heard of it before, so I had to do some research, was the Red Room Theory. Let me know in the comments if you've heard of it before. Like I said, I've never heard of this before, so I had to do some research and it was very confusing. I couldn't actually find a concrete answer of what it was. A lot of people interpret it in different ways. So I will do my best to break it down and try and explain it to you. But if I'm wrong and you know what it is, please correct me if I'm wrong. From what I could figure out is that it's a Japanese urban legend that mostly surrounds this internet pop-up. And this pop-up would pop up on your screen and it would just be a red box. It would be like a little pop-up. And then every time you close the pop-up, it would automatically pop back up. And each time it would pop back up, a new letter would appear until it eventually spell out a sentence. And this sentence would say, eventually, if you close it enough times, do you like the red room? But this isn't your normal, typical kind of pop-up because apparently if someone sees this pop-up and sees this message of, do you like the red room? They end up dead with their blood all over the walls, essentially making a red 
room. So yeah, that is basically the myth of the red room. There were other interpretations that I saw online, but that was the main one that I saw. And the reason, because you probably think, well, okay, well, why the hell is this linked to this case? Because nothing about the red room has come up so far. Well, the reason it's linked to the Nevada Tarn case is that when the police searched Nevada's computer, they found an animation of the red room that was her first bookmark. So there are rumors it's just rumors, but there are rumors that because she was obsessed, I don't know why they think she was obsessed, clearly because it was her first bookmark, but no one can really confirm whether she was obsessed or not. But there are rumors because she was obsessed with the Red Room that that is what drove her to murder. Again, I don't believe it. I feel like when children especially kill, people like to look to things to blame and they love to blame things like horror films, video games, the internet. I mean, I don't know, maybe in some cases it can contribute to the murder, but ultimately, I don't believe anyway that they are the sole reason for someone committing a child committing murder. And following the link between the Red Room and the case of Nevada Tarn, the legend of the Red Room has become even more popular. So when this case blew up online and there was all this speculation as to what exactly happened and what could be the motives behind this case, this is when girl A was given the nickname Nevada Tarn. And the nickname came from the hoodie that girl A was wearing on the day of the murder, which is the day of the annual photo. And you can see in the picture, she is wearing a Nevada hoodie from the University of Nevada. And Tarn is added to names in Japan to kind of make them a little bit more cutesy. And Nevada Tarn, girl A, was also turned into a meme because she's so cute. And it's not the first time that we've come across a case where someone blows up because they're cute. Isabella Guzman, anyone? And because of the online popularity of Nevada Tarn, people actually started to dress up as her, to impersonate her, which resulted in a hell of a lot of University of Nevada hoodies being sold. It was actually their most popular item at the time of this murder. Now, why? Why? Why are people buying this hoodie? And demand for the University of Nevada hoodie got so crazy and out of control, the university actually had to pull it because the demand was so high and they pulled it out of respect for this case because people were only buying this bloody hoodie because of the murder that happened, which is just sick. And get this, a German rock band renamed their band Nevada Tarn in honor of Nevada Tarn. Why? Why would you name your band in honor of a killer? And this case brought up a lot of debate in Japan because there was mass panic about this case because it's not very common that an 11 year old commits murder and people wanted to know exactly what happened so they could learn from this case so it wouldn't happen again. And a lot of the debate centered around how young Nevada Tom was because she was only 11. And like I said earlier in the video, the criminal age of responsibility in Japan was 14 and it was already lowered from 16 only a few years prior to this because of another murder. And that case is, oh my God, it's so horrific. But in that case, in 1997, a 14-year-old male student murdered a 10-year-old and an 11-year-old and one of the victims he actually decapitated and put their head outside of his school. And I didn't look any further into that case because it sounds absolutely horrific. But that case caused the age to lower to 14 from 16. And there was a lot of debate whether this case would then lower it to 11. The Nevada Tarn case didn't actually lower the criminal age. It's still 14 to this day. So on May the 29th, 2008, authorities said that they wouldn't be seeking any additional sentences for Nevada Tarn. And from that moment onwards, she would just be placed under house arrest. And then in 2013, when Nevada Tarn was aged 20, she was released from house arrest. And her and her family have moved to an unknown location. And Nevada Tarn is just out there living her life. We don't know where she is. We don't know what she's doing. And in 2005, so a year after the murder, so we've kind of gone back in time a little bit here, Satomi and Nevada were both awarded a graduation certificate 
Charlotte. So Tommy's father did accept her certificate on her behalf and the authorities wanted to award Nevada with a graduation certificate. They thought by awarding her her graduation certificate, this would aid her into reintegrating into society. So it seems like, and I don't really know when because obviously she was under house arrest after the four years of being in the institution, but it does seem like she may have returned to school. Maybe she was homeschooled in some way. And we don't really know any answers about this case. There wasn't that much information as to why Nevada did kill Satomi. And I think because there's not a lot of information about this case, a lot of people have blamed the internet and blamed things like the Red Room and blamed horror films. But like I said, I don't feel like those things are solely to blame. And it does kind of bring up that debate, doesn't it, of nature versus nurture. And I've always kind of been a person that believes in both. I do believe that some people are born more predispositioned to commit murder and then it takes an environmental factor to almost trigger that off in someone's brain for them to commit murder. But let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. I always love reading your theories and your opinions. Thank you again to Karma for sponsoring today's video. If you guys wanna go check them out, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Don't forget to let me know what cases you wanna hear next because I always wanna know what you wanna hear and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.